Hey, I'm Jared, and this is how I UV map my characters inside Maya. UV mapping is one of those concepts that definitely takes a little while to become clear as to how and why exactly you do it. In a lot of ways, I know as a younger artist, I would tend to overcomplicate it. But as I've improved, it's much more straightforward of a process, so today I hope to kind of clarify the way that I like to work in creating UV maps for my characters. This character is a project that I've been meaning to finish for quite some time, so I figured this would be a great piece to use as a demo to show off some of my workflows for UVs, baking, as well as some of my texturing process. So prior to this point, I went ahead and created a quick clean topology for my character that I'm going to use for this demo. A lot of these pieces are actually lower than what I'm going to use for my final model, but this is going to make dealing with my UVs rather easy. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is open up our UV window and dock it to the top of our window. So the first thing that I do whenever starting to establish my UVs is I'm going to come over here to the create tab and here we're going to hit this camera based UVs button. This is going to create UVs based off of what our camera sees. This step is important purely because it's just meant to give us some UVs as a starting point. From here I want to start to define the seams that I'm going to use. With the edge tool, I'll select where I want to make my cuts so that the UVs lay out as nice as possible. Most of the time I place seams in undersides of objects or places where they won't be seen. I'll also put them in areas that have a natural break in materials that I make, like seams in cloth or places with distinct edges. For this armor and most of the armor pieces, I'm just going to use the bottom side of the armor that isn't going to be seen. So once we've gone through and established the seam on our mesh, the next thing we're going to want to do is come over to the cut and seam tab. We're going to hit this cut button and this is going to establish where our UV seam is going to be. Now that we have a seam, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to hit this unfold button inside the unfold tab. This is going to be the overall process of how I create my UVs. It's not overly complicated. I just have to plan and think a little bit about where I want to make the cuts and where they're going to make the most sense. So now moving on to the next pieces, I follow exactly the same kind of thought process for the rest of the character, but one of the areas that I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted to address was the spikes on the collar. This area, I ended up putting the seams on the corner of the spike, which would ultimately allow them to lay out just a little bit better. Um, it does seem like an area with a visible seam, but I didn't think that the textures were going to be super noticeable in that area to draw attention uh, to a seam, and I felt like Substance was going to be able to hide that fact. So the other piece that's going to require a little bit of additional prep for my UVs is actually going to be these cloth assets. When UVing cloth, I try to take into account the directionality of how the fabric should look. So if the fabric's going to follow a specific flow to the garment. For this piece, most of the fabric isn't actually visible, so I don't have to worry too much about it, but I do want to at least make sure that the fabric is running from top to bottom. So to ensure that, I just make sure that my UVs are set up to tile properly from top to bottom. Okay, so now we'll take a look at creating the UVs for the head. In most production settings, the head model will actually already have UVs associated with it, so you wouldn't necessarily have to go through this step. But for demo sake, I figured it would be a good opportunity to show how I would make UVs when I don't have UVs associated with the head model already. For this head mesh, a large amount of the neck is actually going to be hidden underneath a lot of this armor. So knowing that fact, I want to allocate a little bit more density to the head in the face area. So I'm going to put a seam up a little bit higher on the neck so that we aren't wasting as much textile density for an area that's never going to be seen. The next piece I'm going to go ahead and establish a UV seam for is going to be the mouth bag, the nose holes, and the eye holes. Once we've gotten those pieces cut out, the next part we're going to want to do is hit the unfold button, and you should get a result similar to this which I would say this result is most likely fine to use for whatever you want to use, but because I know that the head is going to be the most important aspect of this character, it's also going to be covered by things like hair as well as the helmet, I did want to maximize this space for the face just a little bit more. So to do this, I'm going to select both of the edges of the seam and I'm going to align them with the corners of the UV space. Now, if I go ahead and select all the verts inside of these corners and hit the unfold button again, this is going to maximize the space just a little bit better so that we have a nicer result. So for the neck, I also follow the same logic. 
I mostly was just concerned about getting it to fit into the space. This area is going to be hidden, so I wasn't super worried about what the UV density looked like or if the textures got squashed. I just wanted to fit it into the UV tile space and just make sure that everything was kind of laid out as properly as possible. At this point, now we have all of our UVs cut for everything, and we've already laid out the UVs for our face. So what we're going to do next is we're going to circle around and we're going to start getting all of our textures packed into the UV islands. For this piece, I wasn't super sure how I wanted to distribute my UVs, so I kept most of the like materials together with the outside armor and the fabrics and decorative pieces all set together. Things like the teeth, skin, and eyes, those were all going to go on their own texture sets. So to keep things a little bit easier to tell what texture set something belongs to, I'm going to go ahead and assign a material to them. This is actually also going to be a vital step for moving forward once we get into the texturing phase. Substance Painter reads all of our materials as a texture set, so you just want to be careful and make sure not to assign any random materials to any random mesh so that you don't end up with extra material sets inside of Substance Painter. When establishing a material to each texture set, I also like to make sure that I go ahead and color code things as this is just a little bit of an easier way to get a visual representation on what I'm seeing. Now to get everything arranged, we're going to want to start by selecting the texture set that we want to organize. With those meshes selected, we're going to right click and use the UV selection tool. From there, we're going to select all of our UVs inside of the UV space, and we're going to come to Arrange Layout tab and shift click on Layout. That's going to open up this Layout dialog box. For most pieces, the stock setting will probably get you about 95% of the way there with just a click of the button. You may be able to make a couple of adjustments after the fact, but this is usually going to give you a pretty nice result on its own without making much modification. For myself, I do like to make a couple of changes to the settings. So first thing I like to change is my pack resolution, which I'll set to 4K. I'll allow for two iterations, and I'll make the shell padding and tile padding set to 1. These settings in the past have given me the best results for my projects, so this is what I like to set the layout to. To max out my space a little bit better, I'm going to take all of the undersides of the meshes that aren't going to be seen, and I do like to scale them down just so I can get a little bit more texture resolution out of my UV space. These pieces aren't super important, and I don't plan on them being seen, so I tend not to allocate quite the same amount of UV space to them. Now, once I've scaled those pieces down, I like to just place them back into the open space on the sheet. Like I had mentioned earlier, I want to make sure that all of the UVs for my fabric materials are going to be laid out vertically so that they also tile correctly. So this is a point where I want to make sure that all of those UVs haven't gotten skewed and tilted in any way. For the armor pieces, I use the same logic, but I mostly rely on letting Maya do the computing and making some small tweaks to any of the UV spaces afterwards just to maximize my space. So once I've gone through each texture set as a last step before I head into bake prep, I like to make sure that things are a little bit more organized for myself by grouping all of the meshes into their respective groups. This is just going to help me moving forward with getting things organized and ready for baking the high poly model. With that said, we'll go ahead and call the video here. In the next video, we're going to take a look at prepping our low poly and our high poly model for baking, as well as how I like to bake out my normal maps, as well as some of the other utility maps that I'll use once it comes to the texturing phase. With that said, if you have any suggestions for things that you'd like to learn in future content, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe to see any future videos, as I am planning to do a video series on texturing as well as rendering this character. So if you're interested in that, make sure to stay tuned. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.